Let's do a few more torques. Just to get a little more practice in how to calculate torque and to get the vector direction. Let's start with a classic. Here we have a disc, a round disc, and it has a radius we'll call big R. And we have a string wrapped around the disc, and the string comes off the disc like that with a weight uh, m. Uh, a mass hangs from it with mass m. So of course it pulls down with the force mg. And the question is, what is the torque on, on the disc? Well, we actually can't calculate the torque on the disc with this information. Uh, because I haven't told you the axis of rotation yet. A torque is a force about an axis of rotation. So if you don't know the axis of rotation, you can't calculate the torque. Right? The torque is not a property of a force. It depends on the force and where the axis is. Because the axis could be here. I could pin a disc there. I could put the, to the disc on some light rods and I could make it rotate out here about this axis somewhere. I could do all kinds of horrible things. But it is true that usually in a situation like this, the axis of rotation is, of course, at the center of the disk, especially if it's a wheel or something that is always rotating about the center. So now you know where that axis is. Now you can calculate the torque. Let's see. So the torque, we recall, is the radius, r, times the force was mg in this case. So in this case, we're assuming that this is at rest. So what is the torque right when we release it from rest? We don't have this accelerating yet. So this has a force mg pulling down. The tension force is also mg back up. And that tension force also applies mg to the side of the wheel. So the force in this case is just mg. And then the sine, of, remember, we got to get the sine of the angle between the two vectors, the vector for r and the vector for f. So rather than put them on the diagram, I'm going to draw them over here. Here's the r vector from the axis to the point that the force is applied that way. And then tail to tail, we're going to draw now the force vector. Right, that's mg. Remember, g is a vector. So we need that angle. Well, it's 90 degrees. right? So the string always hangs around a circle such that it pulls down at 90 degrees. And is it positive 90 or negative 90? Well, r to mg, that's counterclockwise to get from here to here. So it's positive 90 degrees. So we put positive 90 degrees in here. And of course, the sine of positive 90 degrees is 1. So the torque is just RMG in this fairly well-known case is RMG. Let's look at a hinged rod. And by that, I just mean a long rod like this that has a mass m, and it has a length We'll call it big L, like that. It's just sitting there. And we want to know what's the torque on it, because it has weight, right? It has a center of mass somewhere about right here. Therefore, we have mg pulling it down, acting at its center of mass. What's the torque? Can't tell you the torque, because I haven't told you where the axis of rotation is yet. If I just drop this, it'll just fall. It won't turn at all, will it? So it needs to be pinned. So I'll put my axis of rotation, which I'll designate with a star at one end. So now I've pinned it here, and now you know what's going to happen. When we, draw, when we release it, it's going to rotate down, and it'll just swing back and forth. <clears throat> it's kind of like a, it's a physical pendulum, basically. So the torque, let's see. Torque is, let's see, first it's the uh, distance, the magnitude of r. So in this case, r, you know, it's always from the axis to the point that the force is applied. And for gravity, you apply it at the center of mass. And for a uniform rod, the center mass is in the middle. So there is your r vector. And the length of the r vector, the magnitude is l over 2. So it's 1 half l. So that's the r part. And the force is just mg. And then the sine of the angle between them, well, let's see. If we draw them tail to tail, there's r. And the force tail to tail is mg like that. So it is 90 degrees, but we have to go from r to mg. It's clockwise. So that means it's minus 90 degrees. Right, the sine of minus 90 degrees is what? The torque is, that's minus 1. So the torque in this case is minus 1 half L 
mg is the torque about that axis right there. And the minus just means what kind of a motion would this tend to make? It would tend to make a clockwise motion. And we know clockwise motions, according to the right-hand rule, um, are uh, where the torque is into the board. So I didn't draw my torque vector. Here it is, into the board. And if we come back over here, the torque vector, here it is, out of the board, because it was positive. Uh, let's see, what if we don't always have 90 degrees? So let's think, let's let this hinged rod fall. So now it has fallen down to say 30, ew, 30 degrees. All right, so it's still hinged here, but relative to the horizontal position, it's fallen down 30 degrees. All right, well, the weight always acts at the center. So we still have mg down. The only thing that's really changed is the radius vector, the r vector. It goes from uh, the axis to the point the force is applied. So there's the new r vector. It's kind of down like that. Well, the torque is still, uh, let's see, the length of that vector is still 1 half l. And the force is still mg. But now we just have the sign of a different angle. Uh, let's see, if we draw these tail to tail, I'll just do it on the drawing. I'll just pick up the R and do it like that. And you can see that the angle we care about is actually 60 degrees. Because if we draw a horizontal there, that's 30, because that's 30, and 60 plus 30 is 90. Do the geometry, all right. So it's 60 degrees. So we've got to take the sine of 60 degrees. And is it positive or negative? it is R there clockwise, it's negative. The sine of negative 60 degrees. So the sine of negative 60 degrees is minus 1 half. So we have a minus 1 half times a 1 half. The torque is minus 1 fourth LMG in this case. And its direction, just like over here of course, it's making it go clockwise. It's negative uh, in this calculation. So the torque, if we had to draw it, would be into the board. So you can see the torque goes down as this thing falls. It feels a big torque when it's flat out, and as it falls, the torque goes down. When it's all the way down, the torque is zero, right? Because when it's hanging all the way down, like this, straight down, the radius vector and the force vector will be parallel. And then the angle would be zero, and the sine of zero would be zero. So the torque changes as this thing flops back and forth. So that's just a few examples of all the things you have to think about to calculate a torque.